espionage targeting China. A spokesperson told state news agency Xinhua that espionage has been conducted in more diversified ways and against a wider scope of sectors. The organizations on the list must conduct counter-espionage vetting and training for their workers with access to state secrets. These employees must also sign non-disclosure contracts before taking on their jobs. Training in the field of counter-espionage is also required before workers leave on overseas trips. The workers must be interviewed on national security grounds when they return. The regulation comes amid increasing tensions between the US and China over a range of issues. The Biden administration released a major intelligence report earlier this month, labeling China as one of the largest threats to the US. Britain will be dispatching a carrier strike group to the Indo-Pacific region next month. It will be led by the Royal Navy's flagship carrier, HMS Queen Elizabeth. The carrier strike group will journey seven months from the Mediterranean to the Indian Ocean and then the Pacific. It will visit more than 40 countries along the way, including port calls in Japan, India, South Korea and Singapore. The strike group will also be participating in joint exercises with other military forces, including those from Japan and Australia. Last month, the UK released a new policy calling for an increased focus on diplomacy as well as security in the Indo-Pacific region. This latest deployment is seen as an attempt to strengthen Britain's involvement in the region amid growing tensions between the US and China. European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen says the EU needs to do more to tackle sexism. Her comment follows her recent treatment in Turkey where she was denied a chair at top-level talks. The incident has come to be known as Sofagate. I felt hurt and I felt alone as a woman and as a European because it is not about seating arrangements or $0.8 billion, up 79% from $3.2 billion in the same period a year ago. HSBC is Europe's biggest bank by assets, but Asia is the biggest contributor to its earnings. CNA's Roland Lim joins us now with the details. Roland, first the numbers. Give us a quick breakdown of the key figures. Right, Asia uh, continues to be HSBC's biggest uh, profit center, uh, earnings this part of the world relatively unchanged from a year ago. Uh, there were big jumps in all its major divisions. China, Hong Kong continues to be the major drivers of growth here in Asia. Now, adjusted pre-tax profit rose 6.4 billion for the first three months through March, beating the consensus estimate of 4.3 billion. Uh, reported revenues, that was down 5% from the quarter to 13 billion from the same period last year. Uh, which the bank says continues to reflect the low interest rate environment. Now, HSBC said in February it will not pay quarterly dividends in 2021, but it will now consider an interim payout for the uh, half-time results in August. And from next year, the bank says it will be targeting average loans. For Q1, credit losses we've seen uh, for impairment charges, that also fell. The bank released some 400 million US dollars of provisions set aside for bad loans compared to 3 billion last year. It's also expecting mid single digit percentage growth uh, in consumer lending for the year. And that's depending on how quickly countries can actually recover from the pandemic, as well as the duration of the government support measures in place. Now, remember, central banks have pumped tens of billions of dollars of liquidity into the global financial system this past year as they try to jumpstart the economies. Mm -hmm. uh, U.S. Federal Reserve, for example, said that last month that it expects to keep interest rates at near zero levels through to at least 2023. And that is weighing on the bank's ability to make money from products tied to interest rates, such as lending. Great. Right. Uncertainty over how many doses India will receive as the United States pledges to share up to 60 million AstraZeneca shots with other countries. And staying on India's coronavirus crisis, an expert tells us why people are blaming the Modi government. Social distancing, yes, they are blaming the central government.